And because, as you say, there were relatives still living and the story still sort of relatively fresh in the sort of public consciousness for people of a certain age, yeah. um, presumably there's a duty of care that you all had to have that was way in excess of you know, other productions that you've been involved in. A sort of, yeah, a caution maybe that, that sort of came to play. Yeah, I think that carried through with all our heads of department, all the departments across the board, actually, from the very early meetings that we had with... Um, we went down to see Norman yeah. um, in, his, uh, in his cottage um, just outside Exeter. So he's down and still in that part of the world. And, uh, you know, that was incredibly memorable. The, the lunch we had with Rupert Thorpe, um, Jeremy's son... It was extremely, I mean, yes, of course. The real Diana yeah. Stainton, the actual secretary who we had lunch with, we loved her. She lives in Turkey. It's interesting because you want to meet them and be diligent and have respect, but you're not there to be beholden to them either. Mm. No. Uh, it, it's a tricky balance. It's, it's like, mm. you, we had to sit with them also and say, we're not telling your story, we're not telling your version of the story. We will have our own version. And so. You've got to respect that, so it was, which was fine as a yeah. process, wasn't it? It was interesting. And we spent a lot of time with Norman, who's amazing, who is an amazing character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, as well, what I think is quite nice with, with this is we, we took Norman, we took the episodes down to show Norman and sat there really nervously, yeah, didn't yeah. we, in his living room. And that was surreal for us to watch a real person watching their life back. Mm. And because I think the thing about Norman is, is that when you read the books, when you read, or if you just look on Wikipedia and research the history of the case, he's a mystery. Because this was yes. the 60s and 70s. He's a mystery. Why did he do this? Why did he do that? How did he act in this manner? What was the appeal? It's now 2018. When you meet Norman, you go, oh, hello, you're a gay man. I completely get that. You're not a mystery anymore, actually. The, because it is the Jeremy like, Thorpe scandal. It's Jeremy always that you hear about. Yeah. And, and Norman, as you say, has been a very shadowy figure up. So was it for you as simple as that? It was, now I understand. It's a, simply, it's a story of a man who fell in love with a powerful guy. To be honest, and from, was, from a normal know. side, the moment I met him, I just went, oh, I've met you before. <laughs> no. it's, like you, it's like, you're my friend Peter, you're my friend Derek, you're my, I, just, I get it. And, and, and yes, yeah, I, I kind of... And you want to do him justice. That was the thing. And what was it like for he, you, Hugh, when you had members like Rupert Thorpe kind of wanting to be, not necessarily involved in the production, but keen to find out what was going on and obviously how Jeremy was going to be portrayed? Was that difficult? Well, I don't know that that's the case. Uh, I don't know how interested he was, actually. I was... They, you all went and had lunch with him, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I uh, shied at that fence. Um, I don't know why. I, I was frightened of him. Someone told me he was a paparazzo. That they've never really been my cup of tea. <laughs> so... <laughs> I skipped him. But I did meet thousands of other ex-colleagues and friends of Thorpe. And one of the amazing things was just the diversity of opinion about him, mm. from people saying, darling, he was the nicest man you have ever met in your life. He would never have hurt a flea. This thing about him being plotting to murder is preposterous. To others saying, oh, no, 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 no. Very dark and terrifying monster. And where do you fall between those two poles? Uh, you know, inhabiting his character, where do you, where do you think he sits? Well, I think that uh, he was both and some of the things in between and I, I always think we, we all are. I mean, perhaps without the murdering bit, but uh, <laughs> I've always thought, I'm certainly not one person, I'm about six, depending on mood, environment, hangover, whatever, and, uh, and I think that's how he was too and there was a, uh, there was, a, for instance, a, definitely a charming Thorpe. There was a very loving family man Thorpe. And I, that, for me, that was always crucial in this thing, that he, although we have a scene where I, uh, Thorpe admits he's only getting married the first time to sort of boost himself in the p polls as liberal leader, he did fall in love with his first wife and was brokenhearted when she was killed, and he loved his son, and then he really loved his second wife, Marion. And uh, that was key because... Uh, amongst all the other reasons for wanting to murder Norman, like, don't fuck with my career, you know, I'm this great Narcissus and, and I'm rising up the, 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 the greasy pole in Westminster and all that. Uh, apart from those reasons, there was also, don't come anywhere near my family and my mm. kid. Um, and that, that I could grab onto. You know, it's, it's the middle class man coming down the stairs in the middle of the night with a Caesar burglar and reaches for the cricket bat and yeah. suddenly becomes a caveman. And that was quite 
important to be able to say with conviction, well, we have to kill him. Yeah, it comes very clear cut when it's about you yeah. know protecting his family yeah. and his nearest. And yeah. I think that was handled really, really brilliantly um, tonally. That the fact that you can simultaneously be indulging in same-sex relationships, which at the time were obviously very covert and illegal, and you know had that sort of exciting kind of illicit vibe to them, whilst being a family man and loving you know your family, yeah. your wife, your your, your son. Um, so is it true that the, the the former secretary came on set? That, the, that, that she... Yeah, she did, yeah. yeah. She rocked up. She, it, we were, it was day two of filming, and we were, um, we were at the house. It was Jeremy's second house, so where he moved to when he married Marion. Mm. So it was actually Marion's house, just along uh, Bayswater, wasn't it? And, uh, and so it's day two, and we were, we were doing the balcony scene. So it was actually the end of episode three, um, with, uh, you know, post the, the trial on the balcony with everybody. And... Uh, um, this lady came with her, she was actually with her carer, and uh, we didn't know that, we hadn't, weren't expecting her, we didn't know she was going to turn up, but we letter dropped the area, as we do when we're filming, to say we're going to be turning up, and it was about two streets down from the real um, Jeremy house, uh, Jer Jeremy Marion's house, Yeah. and not that far from where you, you were living at the time, was it Stephen? And, uh, and yeah, and she said, um, I used to be uh, Jeremy's, PA, in fact I was his PA for 21 years, and uh, I raised Rupert, I helped raise Rupert. And it's not a character we go into in great no. de depth in our story, no. but it was, um, it was incredible. She planted herself down on set, like she sort of owned a bit of what we were up to. <laughs> and uh, I could, you could see she was quite touched by you know, the, the transformation in Hugh, looking so uncannily like Jeremy. Um, and we had that throughout, you know, when we would, went down to Devon, um, people were coming up and saying they were, you know, MPs and, at, at, yeah, I think it was a, it was a junior politician. Do you, do you remember the lady that we see? She was on the, the um, Liberal campaign trail and she brought a photo of herself. Um, oh, yes, yes. Into, yeah. Yes. I pretended to be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> she will treasure that forever. <laughs> um, Stephen, how did you feel about having um, the former secretary on set? You know, having a, you know, a, somebody who knew him so well just there on your shoulder. I would have asked her if she'd arranged the conspiracy to murder. <laughs> I don't know. I actually didn't know she'd been on set. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that... It's nobody... that forensic eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 nobody tells me anything. 